Welcome back to State and Local. I'm Anne-Marie Babistone. I have another candidate for a state office, and that would be Matt Kelly, who's going to oppose Becca Roche as a Republican at the state Senate. So I'm very pleased to have him here. So thank you for coming on. Thank you, Anne-Marie. I'm so happy to be here and chat with you and all your viewers. Now, you know, I've got to give you credit. I mean, you you could have you could have gone in the primary for state rep. Why did you decide to go straight for Richard's old seat? Well, the state representative, Jeff Roy, is a good friend of mine and here in Franklin Medway. Um, and we work together. Oh, you're not, in, you're not in our, I'm sorry, I guess I'm confused. You're in, in the same district that we're in, aren't you, in Norfolk? Yes, I should probably tell, give you the towns that those are in. Um, that might help you uh, a little bit. So the, uh, the district for Bristol, uh, Norfolk, Bristol, Middlesex is Attleboro, North Attleboro, Plainville, Rentham, Norfolk, parts of Franklin, Millis, Sherburn, parts of Natick, Needham, Wellesley, and all of Wayland. So it's a very large district, 12 communities in all. But my, my question was, um, <clears throat> Dooley is up for re-election as state rep. Yes. And I was just wondering, he's not, he has not been primaried, and I just wondered why you didn't go for that before you went for Senate. Sure, it's a great question. So uh, Sean Dooley represents uh, Norfolk, Millis, Medfield, Plainville, I believe. Um, and f I live in the town of Franklin. And oh. our state rep is Jeff Roy. Those who districts is overlapping and all. Oh, yes. I see. I'm sorry. Okay. No, that's okay. Is, uh, it, is this your first running? Is it your first time running? Uh, for state know? senate, yes. But I've been a legislator in Franklin on the town council for the last 12 years. Uh, served five years as the chairman and the vice chairman uh, in each of different roles over there. But for the last 12 years, I've been in Franklin, um, like I said, on the Franklin Town Council. Now, you must know um, the jewels in Franklin. Yes, I do very well. I was going to say, uh, the, all the Republicans know that. Are very, are very nice people, yes. Now, you you're being you're being uh, you're being ambitious. Do you think you'll do you think you'll make it? I mean, it, 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 this legislature is so one-sided. I don't think I know. We're going to make it. We're going to have a win November 3rd. We're excited. Uh, I think we represent the communities that I'm going to serve needs. And we're a voice of the people. I've had uh, 12 years experience in local government to be able to uh, learn what it is to be a legislator. I'm a small business owner. So I kind of really have a pretty good tap into small business owners and their needs. I'm also a father of two beautiful children, as well as my wife, who's a school teacher. So I get the education portion. Um, 21 years as an educator for my wife. And uh, I've represented locally the people of Franklin for the last 12 years. So I think all of that combined gives me a great advantage to uh, know that we're going into November 3rd with a win. Um, and our constituents know that I'm going to work hard for them based on my past experiences. So, <coughs> pardon me. So not being in that primary, you have a window of time still. Yes. Until November. Uh, we kicked off uh, March 5th, which was fantastic. Had a great oh. uh, kickoff in, uh, at the Three Restaurant on March 5th. I uh, wanted to make sure that we kept it local, kept it home. And uh, we had um, well over uh, 100 or more people that attended our event. And uh, from there, of course, the coronavirus hit. And uh, we have worked diligently throughout the whole time working on the campaign and uh, talking to people, which is what they really want to do. They want to have their voices heard by somebody. <laughs> Pardon me. Well, I think it's very hard for candidates with this situation because I was talking to somebody else and I asked them if they were going to have something at the Norfolk Grange. And I think it just recently opened. And so, I mean, I suppose it's doable, but, you know, you can only have so many people. Well, and, we've been having you know, events. Um, we've been having events. We just had a, an event oh. in North Attleboro this week. Um, and we had a free ice cream for the kids on the park and rec. Um, and uh, North Attleboro has a town pool and the kids that were over at the, the pool came. We had a number of parents come. Um, you know, what we're doing is we're doing socially acceptable uh, events that allow people to socially distance. Uh, we have an event uh, this Monday at the Franklin Town Common 
with another free ice cream cart. We'll be coming to North Fork and then rent them soon as well, uh, where the ice cream um, you know truck shows up and we give them a free ice cream and an opportunity to have a social and distant conversation with me. And then next week we're having an event. Um, I have uh, seven of the Franklin Town Councilors coming out to provide me their endorsement um, on the race, and they'll be at La Cantina Winery next week in Franklin to do that. Where is that place? I've heard of it. It's right downtown um, on Union Street in Franklin. Uh, it used to be the um, Union Street Grill used to be next door uh, to that years ago. Now Acapulco's moved over there. We're really trying in Franklin, and I've made an effort um, as a local, you know, a local business owner as to champion as well as my uh, my status as a local. Um, elected official in Franklin and a town council over the last 12 years to push more small businesses into the Union Street uh, corridor and it's starting to work out very well. Now aren't there a lot of businesses there to begin with I mean aren't there businesses on both sides of is that the, is that the street that Valleys is on and Acapulco that would, be, that would be Main Street this is oh, okay. street back so if you were coming uh, off of exit uh, 16 and you came over to where uh, the Italian restaurant it used to be Joe's American Bar and Grill, but if you took on a left yes. and headed down that way towards, uh, uh, towards, like I said, the Union Street Grill or towards the Common in that direction, um, it's the small, um, what they used to call the Italian section of uh, Franklin. And the reason being is years ago, they would paint the um, streets in with yellow uh, yellow lines like we do now but years ago they would paint them at, during the day and at night the people in Franklin used to come down and paint them with the Italian flag colors um, because that was the that was kind of that the area of town and now we've seen oh. a revitalization since uh, oh, about three years ago when I started putting some revitalization laws on the book to really get people back down there. La Cantina opened up as a winery. They, uh, fantastic local couple, the Vizellas, um, and uh, they started to do a lot of um, local events. And it's, I've done a couple there as my as a small business owner, um, as well as now we'll do our, um, our campaign event there next week, mostly because we want to stop trying to help these small businesses get back on their feet. Well, I mean, it's, 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 I was talking to somebody earlier, it's absolutely horrible what's happened with all this destruction in these cities, because it's not just the big fancy stores that are being taken down, it's also the, the, the you know, the, the, the local stores. Now, did you tell, what, what business are you in, did you tell me? Uh, property management and real estate. I've uh, 22 years, almost 24 years, I should say, in property management and real estate. My, uh, <laughs> my mother started it when uh, I was just a, a young child at about the age of 13 she got in and uh, now I'm a second generation old realtor and uh, you know and family so important my you know I want to continue my mother's tradition. Now um, what do you think just tell me what you think about this the the, the, um, the the structure over at the at the legislature because I remember you may remember Sean O'Connell. Yes I do. And you know she tried to rattle cages among the Republicans and I think it was, I think it was Bruce Tarr or who it was, but they pulled her out of her committee to keep her quiet. It's terrible up there. And now, now of course, she's the mayor of Taunton. I think she maybe just <clears throat> had enough of it. But um, do you my goal is to is to be the people's voice um, in the state house and really in the Senate. Um, you know, I have a unique perspective where you see most of your um, senators up there are attorneys. They want to oh, write yes. laws and stick them on our local economy and our local business owners, as well as our local legislator, legislators. And my unique perspective that I bring is not only that I'm a small business owner and have been for a number of years, but I'm also a, um, you know, a town counselor and I know how to legislate, unlike my mm -hmm. opponent who only has a few months of legislating, uh, to local legislating powers um, or a job that she ever had. I've been legislating for 12 years. I know what it's like to get down and dirty with our town budget every single day and work with it and make sure that we don't have to go back to the people for more money. And I, you know, I'm really want to be the local representative, representer, uh, um, representative for the communities as, as a whole. Um, I'm going to be there. We haven't had a senator in the last two years that has shown up um, in our local communities, and you're not going to see that from me. My my job in Franklin has always been to be there when the people needed me and to show up and I'll do the same thing in our district. So I think all of that combined will bring me a uh, unique opportunity to really have a, a really good voice at Beacon Hill when the time comes. 
So are the town councilors in Franklin similar to the, the selectmen in Norfolk? Very similar. We are the governing body for the town and we hire a town manager or a town administrator and the town administrator reports to the town councilor, the uh, town council. And um, here in Franklin, we have nine town councilors. Do you? And they're all at large. And then the nine. Really? Huh. Yep. And then the nine um, town councilors elect one member amongst themselves to be uh, the vice chair and one member to be the chairman. And I've been fortunate by my fellow uh, town council is to be elected uh, for five terms as one of either the chairman or the vice chairman. Um, so I bring a great unique um, perspective to the uh, to legislating. I have the history. I know what's going on. And when I get to Beacon Hill, I know what our towns need. I'm going to be the voice of the people. Now, how many uh, terms do you, how, <clears throat> what's the length of the term for town councilors in, in Franklin? Similar to the Senate, two years. So if you've been a town council for 10 years? Uh, 12 years altogether. 12? Yes, so six elections. So you're, I mean, you're well liked in town. I mean, that's obviously, people think you must be think you're doing a great job or. Well, you know, if you're not, uh, if you're not always, I think I'm well liked, but I also think that I come with a very, um, very unique perspective as a small business owner that, um, you know, I've always been a nonpartisan because all of our elections in town council are nonpartisan and they are at large. So I've always come with the the nonpartisan view that I have to represent everybody. Doesn't matter your political affiliation, and we have to work with, with, the, with, with the greater good of the town, just like I'll do when we get to the Senate. I'll work for the greater good of the district and what's the best decision uh, for our district. Each one of our communities and the 12 communities are completely different. Oh, and, yes. Uh, and I expect that each one's gonna want a different demand or a different uh, question or a different need. And I plan on working with each individual legislator at the town level, as well as the people uh, at the town level and work with them so that I can be the voice for them in Beacon Hill. Now you were saying you were, this is, so this is the sheet that Richard Ross had that went Democrat. Yes, it was the back first was long time that it was. Now, now, what do you think about, about the kids going back to school? Well, um, I think that, you know, just like the governor said, if we can get uh, kids back to school, that's fantastic. We need to do it safely, and we need to be able to get everybody, um, everybody back. But, you know, we go back to my experience as a town counselor, um, a, you know, and a small business owner. No matter what it is, we want to get people to be safe. And we want to be able to get them to uh, to get back and do what the best they can. I think it's a tough call with the kids because I mean, I, I taught school, I taught in the city of Boston for 34 years, and I, in my my opinion, they don't seem to contract it like the elderly do. And I think what's happening to them not being in school because it's it's not the same. I mean, they can talk about remote all they want, but, but it's it's not the same experience. And I think we're going to end up with a lot of people with, with, with big gaps in their education if they don't, if they don't go back in, in some way. My wife's a teacher and she'll tell you, she wants to get those kids back to school. I think all of our teachers want to do everything they can to get kids back to school and they want to do it um, as quickly as possible, but they want to do it safely and they want to make sure that every child in Massachusetts, and I want to make sure um, as an, you know, the elected official to make sure that every child in our communities um, has a great education and is afforded a great education. You know, the teachers unions don't want to go back. The union leadership of the teachers mm -hmm. and the, the I, I saw something on the on the Boston teachers, uh, you know, union that they don't that they don't want, want to go back. I mean, I, I think that's kind of a, I, I, I think that's kind of a liberals position, keeping the keeping them keeping the lockdowns going and keeping the kids home from school. I mean, it's just me. And yeah. I think, you know, and I think the I think the teachers union really kind of walks lock, in lockstep with the, with them. Yeah, I really think it, it comes down to a local issue, but I think I, I, like you and probably everybody else that will listen to this, um, really can't wait till this is over and we can move forward so that we can continue to work towards getting back to normal. Um, I think our small businesses, um, like myself, need to get some, get as much help as they can and we need to get, we need to do the best we can um, and look forward to better days ahead. Do you feel as if the legislature so far has ignored small business people 
Well, I think what happens is, and I, I only talk as a small business owner and small business owners like myself that I've talked to, um, I think our legislator is quick to uh, add more taxes versus cut and look at what they can do. Um, and I think at the end of the day, um, you know, we need to look at, you know, how do we cut the uh, cut what we can at Beacon Hill before we start adding taxes um, onto our people like my opponent wants to do. Um, so I think, you know, what, again, I go back to the large, uh, the larger question that, you know, most of our, uh, senators and Beacon Hill are attorneys. They want to file bills. They don't know what it's like to be a small business owner. Oh, they definitely. don't know what it's like to make payroll. I know how to make payroll. I've been making payroll for almost 20 years and that's really important. They don't have to worry. <laughs> they don't have to worry about making payrolls. I mean, it's the last thing that they... That they worry about, and and I I mean it, I mean look at the look at the uh, Senate presidents that have gone to jail, and I, I believe DeLeo is <clears throat> was on the ropes there for a while. Yeah, I think we just got to we've really got to focus on how I can represent the people of our district with common sense and really be a voice for them um, and be their local representatives. Well, what what do you think is important? I mean, as you I mean I assume you have you been you've been to all the towns. Yes. I mean, is there any consensus in what people what people are concerned about? Yeah, I think that, that people are concerned about three items. You know, they're concerned local representation. They're not hearing from their senator. They're not seeing their senator. And they're certainly not getting answers from their senator. They're concerned about their local government. They, um, they feel like, uh, you know, their local government's tied with the unfunded mandates that have been uh, forced to them. Um, and that's a real concern. And they're concerned about their um, they're concerned about their local economy, and you know, small that goes back to small businesses. I'm talking to small business owners that are very concerned about how they're going to stay open. Uh, you know, let's face it: the average Main Street business prior to COVID had 28 days in reserve. Uh, we're well past that, so they're worried, and the state needs to step in and start helping out because we need to figure out how we're going to keep our small businesses open in Massachusetts for the long term. Now, we're, we're, we're some small businesses. Um, did they get any money from the federal government? They were able to take out loans. Um, oh, was and, that it? Yeah, and they were able to do a couple of few things, but it still doesn't, it still doesn't meet what we need. Our small businesses are crying and they're the backbone of Massachusetts economy. They're certainly the backbone of this district. Now, um, what do you foresee? I, you mentioned um, Becca not being very, uh, very, very easy to reach um, or responsive. Um, now, what do you what do you expect to do in terms of of your office hours and your and, and are you expecting to do something in, in every town during the week? And will that be too time consuming for you? How are you going to how are you going to do that? Well, I've been holding, um, you know, I've always had, a, I should say, I always had an open door policy as a local representative, as a town councilor in Franklin. My door has always been open. I'm not going to start sending people back formed emails um, like many of the senators do and my opponent does. I'm going to answer the questions. I'm going to be visible. In Franklin, I've spent 12 years of my life here answering people, being at events, being involved. And for me, it's just taking on an extra 11 communities that I feel I can service. I'm used to doing it. I have the experience of doing it. And for the, since March, I've been doing it on a regular basis and I'll be there when people need me. Um, that's my job and you've got to do your job. And if you're not willing to do your job, you shouldn't have it. What, what is your plan for office hours in the towns? Sure. So uh, we have, haven't set a, um, a office hour schedule yet. I'll tell you that. Um, I feel like that's a little presumptuous uh, to do. But that being said, uh, we will have office hours in the towns. And uh, we're actually looking at having more of events than office hours, as well as office hours. I shouldn't just count them out. But um, there has been some conversation um, with, you know, what, what exactly we can do to get people out, because it's really about having conversations with them. It's not about, um, about just sitting there in a chair saying, well, I was here for two hours. That doesn't do it. Our goal is to get, just like I've done in Franklin, get people out, have those conversations. And, and ultimately, um, you know, my first two years, it's really important that I meet everyone that I possibly can. So, um, and I want to make sure people know that I'm here for them. So I, I'm I've, I've really never cool. heard about Becca having any office hours in Norfolk. I, I, never, I mean, maybe I'm out of the loop somehow, but I've, I've never known of that. 
Yeah. See, and that's, for me, it's all about working with the local government. I'm going to work with them, figure out how they need me. I'm going to be there for the local people. Um, I'm going to represent the local people. And, and ultimately, I want people to know me when I walk around. If you remember, this was uh, Richard Ross's seat and Scott Brown's seat before that. And both people, uh, both of those gentlemen, people knew very well. And they knew him when he walked in a restaurant, a small business. Mm -hmm. They knew him when he walked in the town hall, the, if mm -hmm. it was a town clerk or the administrative assistant, they knew him. And they knew him when he was out and about walking down the street. And I'm going to emulate them. I want to turn around and be there for them. And I want people to know that if I'm out to dinner with my family, they can stop and talk with me. Or because I'm always out with my family and for dinner. I think it's important as your senator to get out and be involved as much as you can. I just have a question now is that on the town council, you say you have nine, nine members. Yes. Now, have you, um, have you been able to get, have you been able to work with your DPW in Franklin to get the, the roads paved? Because I ask, because that's always an, <laughs> an issue in Norfolk and there's an issue of money. Not so much. There's no, there's not that there's, uh, they're against it, but you know, we have a lot of problems with our roads. Of course, Franklin, brings in a lot more money than we do because of all the all yeah. the businesses we're right there with you but uh, i have a great relationship with all of our dpw staff again it goes back to 12 years experience working with them and you know you're only as good as the staff that you have and uh whether it's the police the fire the um the dpw i have a working relationship with them always uh you know when we talk about the dpw i was the first person to ever put money in the budget in franklin in the last 12 years um it was about i think about nine years ago i put money in the budget in franklin to start funding the roads until prior to that we didn't have any money um so we did that and i took the money from the capital subcommittee and we allocated money each year to doing that we also created a program in franklin that when we do repave a road um, to put, I should say, when we do um, reconstruct a road to do water and sewer lines, um, we do a full depth reconstruction on the whole street. So for us, it was really looking at that because, you know, chapter 90 money is so hard to get in yes. uh, from, the from the state. And we need to look at that as something we can fix down the road. You know, these towns shouldn't be waiting for years to get their chapter 90 money. We need to make sure that we start taking that money and getting it to our towns on a monthly or yearly basis. And, you know, you bring up a great point. It's got to be looked at. And those are the types of items that I will legislate for because I know how to do that. I have always been in the last 12 years involved in doing that. So I'll have an opportunity better than my opponent to be able to get in and get down in the nitty gritty because those are the things that town council, as a town councilor that we need. What, what, do you, what tends to hold up the, the chapter 90 money? Your guess is as good as mine at the state level. Uh, I'll find out when I get there, but yeah, I can rest assured that I'm going to push it because I think, you know, one of the biggest things I've heard from a lot of our town legislators and town councilors, select boards, um, is that they want that to move faster and they need that money. And, you know, that's something that, again, you have to be, if you're going to be the, if you're going to be the state center, you have to be willing to listen. You have to be willing to talk to these uh, town councilors, select boards, city councilors, and ask what they need. And that's what they need. They need us to move faster with that money. They need to get their roads done. Well, now, what, so do uh, you have any events coming up that we could mention? Before you sure. go, uh, so we're headed out on Monday to um, Franklin Town Common, and uh, we'll be doing the ice cream chart. Oh yes. So now, what do you do? Do you, do you do you pay do you pay the truck to come, or does the truck have a schedule, and then you all come at that time, or how does that work? So you, you, I'm going to give you a plug. So uh, I have to thank CNC Ice Cream. Um, if you don't know CNC Ice Cream, they are a it's a Norfolk resident. Uh, Teresa Furlan. Oh yes. Fantastic. Um, she is, uh, it's a veteran owned, uh, which is near and dear to my heart. Most people don't, um, who know me know that I've run the Memorial Day Parade for the last 15 years here in Franklin and Memorial Day uh, festivities and uh, Memorial Day services here in Franklin for the last 15 years. So, um, you know, she's veteran owned and she's got her own ice cream truck. She's a small business owner. Which I've heard of her. And she's a woman owned business. Um, she's a mom. She's a nurse. You know, you can't, you just check off every box when you talk about Teresa and she is fantastic. So, you know, she's volunteered her time. And, um, of course we're buying the ice cream from her, uh, right. but she 
coming out and uh, you know, we're hoping that we get 100, 200 kids. We're doing it um, socially distance wise. Um, we did North Albert, worked out great. Um, and, and it's great, it works out really well. Uh, so that's Monday. Uh, Wednesday will be in Franklin again. It's like a Franklin week next week. Um, but uh, Franklin again on Wednesday for the La Cantina event. And then on oh, yes, Thursday, we'll be up in Wellesley, um, outside the Wellesley Public Library. And doing what day? I'm sorry. What day did you say that was? That'll be Thursday. This Thursday. Um, Yep, and you can go on our site, Matt Kelly for, uh, for Senate, and um, you can get all the dates and all the times on that. But that's Thursday, and what we'll have on Thursday is the ice cream truck up there. Um, tomorrow, we're off to meet them for a small private event with a small business who's asked us to come in. Um, and we're also meeting with um, a resident and um, a constituent in Sherman tomorrow uh, to, to plan a small party with them. So we've been very busy uh, working with the people. Well, that's a nice place. thing. Those coffees are, those coffees are nice. You know, and this is why I had mentioned, I'd asked a couple of people that were going to use the Grange over here, but they seem to think, you know, that they can't do it. I, I don't know. I don't know. They're worried about the distance. I don't know. Because I, those, those, those small venues are a good place to, you know, to talk to people and yeah. find out what they well, you know what it is, you know, and, and I'll go anywhere. You know, I put a mask on. You got to be safe. So you, you put the mask on. You go in. You have a conversation with them. You keep your six feet in distance away. You follow the governor's orders and you do everything you can. But, you know, the job of a state senator in this time of need is not to run away. You can't run as a job of a state senator is to be involved and do what you can to work with the people within your communities. As a town councilor, I've done that for the last 12 years. I know I keep saying it. I've done it throughout all of Corona. That's an accomplishment. Well, and I'm proud to say it. You know, I mean, we've worked hard, um, you know, and, and we're going to continue as a Franklin Town Council. And I'm going to miss them tremendously after November when I'm elected to the state senate. But I keep telling them, I'll be back. You'll see me more than ever. Uh, because I want to work with the towns and I want to make sure that I help them in every way I can. Well, that's laudable. That's certainly, and it's certainly what you should be doing. Now, um, I think we need, we've run out of time here. We just have a minute. So thank you for, thank you for coming on. Thank you and for good having luck. Thank you. So that I was Matt Kelly. That was Matt Kelly, who's running against uh, Becca Roche in November for the the state, the Massachusetts Senate seat uh, that he that he's that he's looking to 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 get. And thank you very much for watching. Uh, this has been State and Local. I'm Henry Battistone. You've been watching NCTV.